Uh, this is an emergency broadcast from Monkey Barrel Studios to you, the Enjoy an Album listener. Did you know that we are doing a live show at the Glasgow Comedy Festival, Hong Kong Kong? Uh, this has not been announced yet. It's going to get announced on Wednesday? on Wednesday. We are not announcing it. This is a pre-announcement. This is a pre-announcement. Big things are come. I love when people say that. Big things are coming. Big things are happening. Keep an eye on the social. So uh, it's going to be announced officially on the 8th uh, for 24 hours only on the 9th. That's Thursday the 9th from 10 a.m. Our Patreons will have exclusive first ticket access to our live show. It's going to be the Glasgow Comedy Festival on March the 17th, 2024 at the Glee Club. It's going to be a fucking wicked night. Um, where uh, the discussion we're having about it already is so exciting. So uh, get on that. Tickets are £12. Uh, Patreons get 24 hours first. If you want to 100% be there, then uh, then make sure you sign up to the Patreon. Patreons, uh, that's our little thank you to you for the continued support. Um, everybody else, the worms, the general public, will be able to get tickets from 10 a.m. on Friday. I hope you enjoy this episode of Enjoy an Album with me and my grace. Hello and welcome to Enjoy an Album with Christopher McArthur Boyd and not Liam Worthnell. This week I'm joined by Michael Rice, stand-up comedian. He's got his own podcast, Vittorio and Mike's Guide to Parrington. Yes, also my special's out on YouTube. I forgot and his to... special's out. Can you plug it now? Yeah, you yes, can plug it. Yes, my special on YouTube. Just type in Mike Rice Comedy, that'll come up. And I'm on tour. This is the intro. It sounds like the end of a podcast. I know, because I forgot to say it at the end. <laughs> we're making like, a judge by the end look, if, if look, they like you. Now and there's so much pressure this. in the episode. Is this going to be good enough to uh, justify a, 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 well, a plug? Okay, well, what you do, skip this plug now, skip forward into it, <laughs> and come back to the plug at the end. That's how I do my podcast listening. Yeah. I'm a time skipper. Yeah, I do it as well. I'm like, <laughs> f- I don't want to be so landed. But then, and so I'm on tour, MikeRice.com. I'm coming to Scotland. I'm coming <laughs> everywhere. MikeRiceComedy.com. <laughs> Go see Michael Rice on tour. He's very funny. He's in Glasgow. He's in Edinburgh. He's, yeah. he's all over the shop. He's a great, really one of my favourite comedians. Um, I think I said my favourite. Yes. On Instagram. On Instagram. Recently. I love that. I said, I said surely on True, but I loved it. No, I mean, I mean a very good comedian. Don't like following him. Tell you that. Don't like following you. Don't like going after you. It's not nice. Thanks, Dad. I like that. It's the nicest thing you can say to another comedian is, yeah, I don't like working with you. (laughs) 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 So we we have have a lovely week this week. We're talking about Westlife. Uh, If you are a patron, we are going to go straight to the episode. If you are a worm, you're you're going to... If you're a McFadden. If you're a Brian McFadden. If you're a dirty Brian McFadden. (laughs) You were you horrible <laughs> oh, a betrayer. Yeah. <laughs> An abandoner, a Benedict Arnold. Uh, he abandoned his boy, just like, uh, you know, in uh, there, you. there Will Be Blood. Yeah. I abandoned my boy. I abandoned my child. My child. Give me the blood. Yes. <laughs> um, You're a worm, uh, Eli. There will be blood. There will be enjoyment. There will of be. Of albums. We have an absolute blast. We're sitting here with, sitting here with producer Mark and uh, we've got Jennings. Guest, guest Race. Um, um, fellow uh, nominee for the Sean Locke Award, you know. Oh, not neither of us. And let me tell you, life has changed. Life's changed. <laughs> <laughs> We're breathing different air now. <laughs> We're breathing different air. By God. We can tell people we were nominated for the Sean Locke Award and the and what that's done for our careers. Yeah, no, it's been brilliant, honestly. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for that, lads. Thanks to Sean. Thanks to Channel 4. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the episode or the adverts or the and the episode. Then uh, you know, um, I think we had a good time this week, so I hope you enjoy it. Hey, are your pubes too hairy? <laughs> Do you need help with that? Your groin too hairlicious, hair uh, suit. Is there too much uh, of a positive environment for crabs and lice? Too much fuzz on your coos. Uh, when you get undressed in front of someone you wish to have a uh, sexual time with, are you embarrassed by the state of your nether regions? Having an examination done by a doctor and you're <laughs> self-conscious about how hairy your balls and f- bits are? Us too. What a shame there's no solution for this kind of problem. No, wait, there is. What? Manscaped. Oh my God, what is that? Tell me more. Not manscaping, not manscaper, manscaped. Only a stupid person would have called it that by accident yeah. 10 times in a row. <laughs> yes. I need an idiot. It's the below the belt grooming experience. It's blade, it's not blade free, it's blade full. 
It's blindfold. When it's cut free. You won't it's cut, cut free. You won't. I'm literally closing my eyes in the shower in the fucking rain coming down. Um, I, I shower in the rain and I'm just f- f- not even looking, just buzzing. If you do look, there's a little handy torch which uh, highlights where you're about to trim. Which- <laughs> Yes. I've never used the torch. That's what? cool. Yeah, yeah, Attached little, to the, yes, the lawnmower? Yeah, there's a light that comes on that wow. shows you exactly where you're trimming. So you can do it in the dark with your eyes closed and you still hit the remote. You can do it dark in the with your eyes closed in the shower. It's waterproof. You can charge it using USB-C. So you can unplug your phone if you've got a USB-C. <laughs> plug it straight into your pube trimmer. You're, you're on a train. You're ready to go. You're on a train. <laughs> Please use only use these your plug sockets up to 75%. for phones, laptops, and pube trimmers. <laughs> that's why they have that saying don't do that but what you should sometimes do, i go into a coffee shop and i sit near a plug socket and i plug my lawnmower <laughs> in so that i could jump into the bathroom vroom, 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 keep it fresh all times i never want to see a single hair on my balls otherwise i cry yeah i've got a cock like a dolphin <laughs> uh it's gray you, gray and uh endangered <laughs> Just if you want a funny gift for someone or you it's want... It's not funny. It's not funny. It's, it's fucking useful. serious. Enjoy an album. Uh, no, what's the code again? Manscaped. <laughs> album, album 20. God almighty. You get 20% Can off. Can you believe we get paid for this? Album 20 for a uh, percent off your first purchase uh and and ongoing purchases i think if you don't have a cock and balls you can do it on other stuff but it's mainly made for the cock and balls it's got the word man in the title let's be honest (sighs) let's not get into that topic man you know but hey Hmm. it's good it's it's good stuff the pants are good and the underwear the anti-chafing material is to die for uh that's album 20 don't die for it enjoy thank you bye You're listening to Enjoy an Album, the podcast where two comedians listen to some of the greatest albums of all time. (laughs) Having spent the duration of their first two albums performing ballads from atop those infamous stools, Westlife certainly made up for it on their third album, World of Our Own, after releasing When You're Looking Like That as a double A-side as the lead single from the campaign. And no doubt buoyed by the earlier success of Uptown Girl, it seemed that Westlife were hungry to continue defying expectations. And what better way to do that than with the title track, which, incidentally, was one of the best songs they've ever recorded. Blurb over, we are in some laugh studios with none other than Michael Rice. Michael Rice, welcome to Enjoy an Album. Thanks, lad. Um... You know what, as, even as you're saying that, that, I got chills down my spine because, <laughs> and this is, this is genuinely because up until World of Our Own, because I think growing up in Ireland, you were kind of, obviously the Irish dominated the boy band landscape oh, between. Unbelievably. Like Boy Zone and boy Westlife. Boy Zone. Yeah. Ronan Keaton, ah, Stephen Gately, Gately, Keith Duffy. Yeah. Duffy is running now a, a tire shop in Dublin. <laughs> Yes. He's, he's selling a place called Tireland and he just came out with he, I swear to God it's called Tireland oh because of Ireland yeah and yeah. he just he came out he should have called it the Republic of Tireland <laughs> <laughs> he should have lied Northern Tireland uh, <laughs> so this truth so around the Rugby World Cup time there he came out with like a big fucking ad for it he's some salesman Duffy mm. he loves oh, a he fucking the song. He, he, he loves a pound you know what I mean and sure no one stole a living like Keith Duffy in the 90s you yeah, know what I mean sure, he couldn't sing or dance lad did you see you need to see the first time Boy Zone and I know we're on Westlife we'll get to him but the first time Boy Zone went on the Late Late Show in Ireland so the Late Late Show basically just makes the careers of people in Ireland sure. or did back then just yeah. everyone watched it we had two channels that it's was like the, the Jonathan Ross show of Ireland more it's more like well, percentage you know. wise of people watching uh, more everybody's just, watching everybody it. watching it right. so they came out and Louis Walsh brought them out uh, for the first time Boy Zone and uh, and they did nothing. They just they just danced around doing different <laughs> dances themselves. And they were they, it was famous for just being just the most. It's kind of just funny <laughs> demonstration of talentless yeah. nonsense of all time. <laughs> and like Duffy was just there fucking giving it socks. Yeah. They became the the biggest band. Lovely big eyes on Duffy though. Oh, Duffy was a honk, and he had fucking uh, 
Shane, what's his face, with him, the two of them, they were like the Bash Brothers. They were in the back there and they were fucking <laughs> mincing around. They didn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. But it was great. It was a great time. But I loved Boys. I, I, I thought they did. Like, Picture yeah. of You was a great song. Joe. Yeah. I have a picture of you in my life. Yeah. And they had that bluesy quality of that. Well, fucking Keating had a had a voice where you, the origins were unknown. Yeah. You know Where's what I mean? Where's that coming from, man? They came deep from the, yeah. the middle of Ireland. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> deep from the bogs. They came from 1916, East Horizon. Yeah. Just deep from man. within. The bullet holes in his voice, man. Yeah. But, but so they, they were there by his own and they had Gately there. So you you had the gay angle as well, and everything was kind of this is modern Ireland. Yeah, cool hip. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A new type. Yeah, the troubles are over. The troubles are over. The fucking <laughs> the solution has arrived. Yeah. Boy zone. We'll bring that'll bring the prods and Catholics together. There's a healthy dose of Keating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can both agree on one thing They're a great band But it's interesting uh, because You know Louis Walsh obviously uh, Managed Yes uh, Boys on then He and uh, Ronan Were co-managers of Westlife That's you know? right And it was a very kind of Engineered thing You know Which some people have an issue with They go oh that's manufactured pop It's like well, What the fuck else are you supposed to do Yeah Just hope a band springs out of nowhere No Yeah you Put an advert in the newspaper You say we weren't Five handsome boys who yeah. know how to, well don't necessarily know how to sing. See what the what people want because people love the little fucking lore of you too. You see in Ireland, so they love like that fucking Larry Mullins trope of poster in the school, mm -hmm. and next thing fucking rotten old Bono toddled along and and the edge. The, pair of idiots kind of <laughs> scuttled in the door and next thing they're just yeah. like in the name you know yeah. desire so people want to, to people say that's how you do it that's a good uh, you know authentic story but in reality look we're doing a boy band here yeah we're not trying to no. you know talk about spiritual matters or whatever the fuck Bono's up to <laughs> we're looking for good honest bullshit let's get the boys in let's good looking young children because yeah. they were a, children there was, there, there were you look back and these boys and you go they were boys yes they were boys it was boys own and you think oh yeah but when I was a wee boy I would look at these boys as men yeah and they weren't really no no now no now we're men they we're men um, certainly there's no doubt about that you yeah. can see the lines on our foreheads yeah. we're fucked um, <laughs> iron brew we in front of us we not be in boy bands anymore no I don't, <laughs> I don't know if we were ever boy band fodder although I told you that that me, so me and my friend Jack were big fucking uh, Westlife fans. Yeah. Um, and that was as uncool as it sounds then. It well, I was. Mean, I was a huge Westlife fan growing up. Yeah. I mean, I just, it, the melodies, it was the melodies for me. <laughs> but, um, so, and it was interesting when you look at. Well, up, I'm curious because I liked Westlife because I have a big sister who was six years older. And when you have a big sister. She listened to every single musician that ever lived. <laughs> And that's why Chris has always heard of them. No, well, <laughs> you know, she this. was a bit of a muse, though, in her yeah. way. She went for Westlife, to the Kaiser Chiefs, to the Cribs, Kings of Leon, Muse. You yes. Know. She listened to a lot of different type of shit. And when you get a big sibling, you just want them to like you. So you get into the stuff there. She liked a the hot man. <laughs> Listen. The see, one thing you could never be. <laughs> 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 oh, if only I was a hot man <laughs> for my big sister. Shut up, you moron. Uh, um, so, uh, aye. So I'm into, I'm into all this type of music. And honestly, you know, sharing a, sharing a, a bedroom with your big sister and the Heat magazine's torso of the week, sellotape to the wall. That's not an environment for a boy to grow up And did in. it stir on inside of you, by God? Well, well stir the love of... Westlife, man. You yeah. Know? So I was, I remember this album coming out 2001. I would have been 12, so I think. I, before the. Wait, no, eight. Yeah. Before World of Their Own came out. So I would have been 11, 12 ish, kind of. Um, before that came out, I would have seen Westlife as softies. I would have seen them as. Well, that's what the blood was saying, that they were yeah. balladeers. So I, I would have seen. Now, looking back, uh, Fool Again, If I Let You Go, these are. If I Let, let You Go. go. I will never know what, what my life would be holding you close to me. 
will I ever see you smiling back at me? Oh, how will I know if I let you go? Yeah. What a song. What a fucking... What a, a generation... Just those people don't think that we're having a laugh Yeah, I'm not having a laugh. They are fucking unbelievable. And then Can't Believe Dime to Fool Again was a massive uh, one for me. I just taught these guys... They're just they're speaking straight to the to the heart yeah, yeah, of yeah. the British Isles. You know, I have a feature in this. It's an intermittent feature in this yeah. program. Is this emo? Mm. And it's been very controversial because I would say, looking back, My Chemical Romance wasn't emo. It was yeah. gothic rock. Right. Whereas Nina Simone, I would say that she was a bit of an emo. Yeah. There's a lot of emo in Westlife world of her own. I would say. Yes. You know? And I I tell you what sadness. There's there's a melancholy to the boys that could have only originated in the west of Ireland, <laughs> which is where of course where they're from. And there is secret posho, secret secret posho. We do fast and feels like no show, got no money, you got no bro. Secret posho. Yeah. This is a feat segment. I haven't done a lot of research into I'm where these so boys sad have came from. I'm so sad he didn't do that in a sort of uptown girl. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> secret posho, secret secret posho. Do it fast and it feels like not show. Got no money, you. That's not really Westlife, but that's no, nice. I wasn't uptown girl at all but uh <laughs> <laughs> top secret posh, posh show you've, you've been, been living, living in a little posh, posh hole oh, I mean uptown ghetto is the secret posh it show. is <laughs> of songs it is that's what it's about and it's out in a class a differentiation there um but so the boys actually the boys lived on the clippings of tin they're, they're men that uh <laughs> The clippings of tin, they were men that were, were dragged up and were well acquainted with the wind and the rain of the west of Ireland. <laughs> and then you had Nicky Byrne, who was kind of a, a north side Dubliner, so he would be from the scraggly side of town mm. uh, in Dublin. So there's a bit of north, an edge to Byrne. North Dublin? Yeah. Not your D4. No, so D4 are kind of, uh, is rugby, kind of almost transatlantic. How are you, Jane Christopher? I'm from Dorky. Hi. I speak like that. I've and got then, a radio program. Yeah, and then you're fucking not, I double like that. How are you yeah. going, Chris? You all right? No, you all right. You all right? Now, Folk. folk and Westlife are folk and class, man. Folk yeah. and brilliant. That's North Side Dublin. Wow. So Nick was from over around there. He, he had trials for Leeds, Nicky Byrne. So he was a footballer. United. Yes. <laughs> So the man was not without talent. Yeah. Right? Now, people would say now he was kind of, you know what I mean? He was a bit of a water carrier for Westlife, as in he was doing a lot of clicking of the fingers, shaking of the hips. The part. But they didn't give him a huge amount uh, to do. He was no Mark. No. Mark. But he, well, Mark Mark was kind of a dis Sam Smith of his time. Yeah. Do you sad know what I mean? eyes. Yeah. Big sad eyes. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh. he was a big gay man, and we lo- like it was like you know, and and Ireland, we were very happy with that at the time. Yeah, you know, we're fucking progressive. <laughs> we're shackling off the the gay people are allowed to sing now. They're allowed. They're allowed. Yeah, and he would just have this deep, oh. and it, it was he was always sounds he's scared. He, he oh. well, he was he was afraid. He was of course he was. He'd come up in Catholic Ireland. He'd been he'd been running and hiding his whole life. Sure. And now he's he's front and center singing "Flying Without Wings," but You're still flying without with, wings. And and that's how he genuinely felt at that time. Yeah. And you could see that Put in him. the joy of it. <laughs> yeah. Now saying that it's still Catholic Ireland, so yeah. you don't have him as the lead. No. You still have Shane Filan as the lead. Shane. Let's not go crazy. Yeah. We need to sell the posters. Louis knew that. Yeah. Louis knew that well. That's, uh, I don't know if you know, I mean, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but Westlife was originally known as West Side. Yeah. And uh, there was two members, and then Simon Cowell came in. Louis Walsh said, I've got this group together. Simon Cowell came in, and Simon went, three of them, fuck off. They're too ugly. Yeah. Can't be it. And then they found, they put an advert out, and they got fucking Brian in, you know? Well, so, they, yeah, McFadden kind of came in late, and I think... <laughs> <laughs> that because of that, yeah. McFadden always had a feeling that he was in some way different or better. He was kind of third fiddle. Mm. So there was Phelan, there was Mark, and then you might have McFadden sing a little bridge. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. throw him a little bone. He was a bad boy. Huh? He was a bad boy. He was a nasty character, yeah. <laughs> there was a cruelty to McFadden yeah. that he couldn't hide. <laughs> and that certainly made him stick out amongst the angels that were the other four. Um, and you could see that there was an element of him. He was a little bit of poison in the water. Do you know what I mean? Get in the oyster though yeah, as well. One hundred percent. But so um, McFadden, I remember when World of Their Own came out. The single World of Their Own, which looking back now was not the most transgressive single of all time. But I remember thinking, 
You make me feel funny. Like I was like, bam, 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 bam. when you come around, that's what I found. Now, honey, bam, 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 bam. would ever do without you? No, oh. yeah, no buts or maybe. Then some buts. Oh, oh man, yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Now, and it's that kind of funky. That's right. I thought this was like, oh, the boys have turned rogue. Mm. The boys have taken a turn towards the devil and they put the foot on the accelerator here. Yeah, yeah. I was like, because they were wearing leather jackets in the video and they're a bit sassy. I was like, the boys are after getting sucked off here at some stage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is a post-suck job <laughs> album. <laughs> this is a post-suck job album. <laughs> the boys have been fucking blown asunder on their Japanese tour and now they're back. And they're fucking, you know, full of all the devil's ideas. So I thought this was like, because at that time, uh, and I had a sweet tooth for a boy band at the time, and I was kind of, I thought that Five were doing a lot of interesting work at oh, that five time. Oh, Five were good, yeah. yeah. And they were kind of hot. They were like, they were doing a bit of rap. When a rainy days are dying, got to eat and keep on trying. Get a reason birds are flying. Like so, no gotta go morning. Yeah, the break break down down in. You just got to break break and break and break well and up. You know, so it was you know that's ga- right. A garage adjacent. A garage adjacent. There was elements of uh, um, punk rock there that are hard to detect. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm detecting them. I'm detecting them because <laughs> I've got sensitive to us, a sensitive <laughs> nose for punk rock. <laughs> but so I thought five were kind of to me. Uh, these are these are boys with a bit of um, menace and mischief. So my kind of my flag was kind of attached to their pole, I, as it were. I'm drawn towards villainy. Yes, you know I like a bit of nastiness. That's why I like McFadden. Malevolence uh, seems quite um, welcoming to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to I want to see what the bad boys are up to. I'm at. watching a Disney film. What's the villain song? Yeah, you know, Gaston. Yes. Scar has a good song where yeah. the lions walk like Nazis. Yes. You know, there's a lot. I like the uh, Team Rocket are more interesting than uh, Ash and Misty and Brock. And That's the, the right. Boys, you know? And when you hear these songs, you kind of feel deep inside, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Hello, brother. brother. Yeah. <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage. That's oh, right. Yeah. They're singing yeah. your story. Yeah. Um... Uh, as a malevolent little man. Now, I didn't need to say little. Now, uh, <laughs> and, and that was the nastiness in me coming out. That's, that's, um, that's the smallness in me coming out. That's yeah. Right, See, so just to, to button in the, the dirt and Brian McFadden standing out. So yes. All, so, Kian, Mark, and, uh, and Shane all went to the same secondary school. And right. Was that in Sligo? Am and, I right in saying that? Yeah. And it was, um, it was Summerhill College. Um, where they all performed in Greece, whereas Brian McFadden, wherever he was from, attended the Billy Barry Stage School, whatever the fuck that is. So, so he saw himself as a star. So there was an individualism to him, because you would say that the other three, there was elements of Stalin, Mao Zedong, a kind of a communist outlook of share the means of production, whereas there was certainly... The collective there was a Reaganism to uh, Brian McFadden that was very... Thatcherism, Reaganism, he's very influenced by individualism. Yeah. And that, as time went on, became... Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. <laughs> yes! The fountainhead he had <laughs> read over and over again. And he was actually, he was an actor as well, Brian McFadden, that says here. Oh, yeah, he was in yeah. a... a Finbar's a, Class, a yeah. TV show. Did you ever watch that? I didn't, I didn't watch it, I avoided it. It was a smutty little uh, a endeavor. comedy revolving around a group of student swingers, it says. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a real piece of filth? Yeah, it was a piece of filth and we we were told not to soil our minds uh, Quite right. and are thinking with that kind of thing. But funnily enough, because at that time in Ireland, if you kind of if you had any aspirations of fame, you know, you were kind of like, you didn't care what it was. You were just like, sure, I'll be something. You'd mm. like, right, I'll go for a boy band. If that doesn't work, we'll try to get on Fair City. We'll try. Uh, so like Colin Farrell auditioned for Boyzone. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And imagine seeing that face Insane and saying, Do you know what? No, we'll get Mikey Graham in instead. Yeah. Ten years, no, no, not ten years, fucking 40 years later, Lou Walsh is watching the Banshees of Inner Sharon. Yeah. And he's thinking, oh, fuck I fucked, fucked up that. big time. You know, but 20 years earlier, he would have been watching Daredevil when he would have been... It was, 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 it's a solid call. <laughs> yeah. Was solid call. Point. He watches Alexander and he's like, I dodged a bullet there. <laughs> that could have been Thank a God. <laughs> God. Colin Farrell's turned his life around. Man. <laughs> well... Uh, Collie Collie Baby uh, I bl- I love Colin Farrell mm. I'm in love with Colin Farrell mm. I love him Deeply Phone box 
Bone Box, you've said a word there, and it's a good film. But that was in his <laughs> that was in his early I'm coked up, I'm eating Britney Spears' arse, I'm fucking, you know. And now he's like chill, he's like an older chill. Well, he, after Miami Vice, he got off the fucking coke. Really? Yeah. It's very he, rare that someone does a Michael Bay film and goes, and maybe go, you just seen the peak of it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I can't compete. Well, he he got very into his character in Miami Vice. So he was he was on the Charlie and he was fucking... So apparently at the end of the shoot in Miami Vice, he was still absolutely, uh, you know, a boozy Susie, drinking whiskey like a really? little sucky calf. And then, so at the end of it, he had one last party where he was like, you know... Um, that's blowing me. blowing little people and having a bit of a crack and then he said that's it now I'm offered and then he went away for a few years because his career was down to fucking shitter after Alexander Miami Vice fucking tanked as well mm. and then he reinvented himself and came back as kind of an indie film character actor yeah. in In Bruges yeah Martin McDonough Martin McDonough that led to The Lobster mm-hmm. uh, working with your man uh, Yamos uh, <laughs> Green. Lagagomos. Yeah, Lagagomos. I, I need to get this guy. Can't say uh, right. Yeah. Y- Yorgamov? Yeah. <laughs> no, you went way off <laughs> way there. Off. It's Greek. You yeah. went You went Eastern European there. But he, so, just, he just directed poor things, which is yeah. right, I also agree. Anyway, getting back. Anyway, Farrell got turned out. Louis Walsh said, I, I, I'd rather eat my own cock than have this yeah. fucker in the band. Useless. No star potential. <laughs> but, so anyway. Yorgos. Yes. Lanthimos. That's right. Just edit that in so it's like what I actually said. Yeah, seamless and yeah. that we just there was no break there. Tell me we're learned men. about this boy band that you and your friend So circling by <coughs> me and Jack, my friend Jack McCarran, who's currently working for Irish television station RTE yeah. as a producer. So he hasn't oh, okay. he, so we were both there was a there do you was think a, he'll be fired for this? Huh? If people hear this, do you think no one's gonna hear this, but it's think, certainly not gonna lead to a promotion. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. It's certainly not going to, once it comes to evaluation day, it's not going to be a feather in his cap. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. But Jack and myself, Asher, the boat was, we we loved, uh, and this is going a bit off topic, but we loved that, like Anchorman for a full year, we spoke in American accents, you know, we were just like, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, uh, I, think I'm, I think we were all guilty of that. Yeah. yeah. 2004. Uh, yeah, that, that, those couple of years, that whole kind of American movie, like Dodgeball ones is, say touche the floor mm-hmm. you know like just all these we we went a bit uh, got a bit mentally ill with that but we had a we had just this thing I, I think we just wanted to be kind of famous and we we're like and we thought we should be mm-hmm. so we liked a bit of Westlife world of their own obviously shattered our Westlife Anchorman put them together yeah put, put, <laughs> put them together <laughs> and uh, you've got two talentless ta- people who have nothing to sell to anyone <laughs> um, so so we uh, we decided we were we started a, a boy band called Undefined and what was Undefined? our sexuality <laughs> and we uh <laughs> So we started this boy band and it was me, uh, Jack, and we could never really get past it just being me and Jack. We were trying to get other of our friends in, but these are just normal lawyer <laughs> sides. are like, well, we don't even like Westlife. We're like, you don't have to like him. You just fucking, dance. yeah, close just your eyes and with s- sing the song. You think Duffy liked doing what he did? He had his eyes in the tires the he, whole time. The, the, he, he was thinking of Tireland even then. <laughs> I, I'm going to get the money, open a big tire shop. How about that? When he was picturing you in my mind, he pictured a big yeah. tire shop. <laughs> Um, and now he's realised that dream. Think down the lo- road, lads. He could sell tyres. Yeah. Anyway, so no. we're trying to get people in, and we we're going to uh, apply for the X Factor. Jack was kind of the lead singer of it. I was kind of the, more the mark, mm-hmm. uh, but I never a great range mm. in, in my voice. I was never a great uh, singer. But um, so we got the the form for the X Factor and everything, and we ended up sending it off. But then we we never heard that back, and and the dream kind of kind of Fizzled. fell apart. But we, we had some great we had some great nights at karaoke nights where we ju- would go up. And so you had your original songs, or we just did covers. Oh, we were just singing Westlife, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're just there was no even pretense to anything else. And Westlife were doing covers, so we were doing 100%. covers of a cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, you know, a lot of country music. I'm getting being getting my country recently, and Queen of My Hearts considered a country song um, by many. Yeah, uh, and it is country influenced. The Queen of My Heart. Yeah. Yeah. Love my heart. Well, I loved it. The line before was, You know you are the, the queen, queen of my heart. heart. Do, 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 What's do. that instrument? Do, 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 Louis do, Walsh's do, do, cock. 
<laughs> well, it's interesting <laughs> you say that because for me, Louis, obviously the Westlife story is incomplete without Louis Walsh. Absolutely. And we all know him, you know, a little grey figure. Yes. Um, a little a little shady, malnourished, uh, money-hungry man. A boy dealer. Yes, he was a boy dealer. <laughs> He was a dealer of young boys. He was just going, where are they? Let's get them. He seemed to have... He seemed, well, so, do you know he originally... Louis originally kind of struck gold with a fellow called Johnny Logan in the 80s. Right about there. So, Johnny Logan won the Eurovision twice. Now, this was... Oh, really? Back to back. This yeah. was fucking unprecedented. Well, so, Ireland, of course, we went on a, a mad Eurovision tear. Was this what the Father Ted episode was about? Yeah. Where they get them in? It's because they'd won so many times they had to... It was bankrupt in the country. <laughs> It was a complete and utter disaster. We kept we kept <laughs> winning the Eurovision, but we didn't have the money to keep putting this it on. This was pre <laughs> Celtic Tiger. No, this was pre Celtic Tiger. This was going from the eighties to the mid nineties, yeah. and so we were we were genuinely at the time mid eighties. We were the poorest country in Europe, or one of them in yeah. the EU certainly, and um, we didn't have a pot to piss in, and well, we knew it. So as everyone was fucking moving here, yeah, there, and yeah, everywhere, yeah. but. Um, so anyway, but sure, by Jesus, we could sing. We could sing an old song. That that never that never bothered us. So sure, we were we were we were winning this rotten old Eurovision every year, yeah. and then we'd have to stage it the next year. And we'd be like, where are we going to put them? Sure, all we have is barns and fucking shit. It's a fucking nightmare. So it genuinely got to a stage um, in the nineties. So we couldn't stop winning. We couldn't even help her. We tried not to win, and we'd yeah. still win. We'd be so good. Um, at singing our old sad songs um, you know uh, oh, Johnny Logan has a cracker one of the winning songs Johnny Logan so he has two winning songs one's called Hold Me Now the other one's called Just Another Year but Hold Me Now is a belter it's like Hold me now don't cry I have to hold you do. and it's brilliant and, and you think this was a kind of proto Westlife well so this guy was so Louis Louis had Logan now Logan uh, as it ended up he never really struck a chord after that with the British public but the Germans loved him. <laughs> He's absolutely massive in Germany. He was kind of that really? Hasselhoff yeah, yeah. kind of energy. Um, like Hasselhoff had a ma- massive music career in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Which was kind of mind-boggling. Nowhere else took him in. But the Germans... Because he was there during the fall of the Berlin Wall or something? Like I that? think they don't forget those kind of things. You know <laughs> no. what I mean? If you were around for the fall of the Berlin Wall, they don't care if you shit in a the bucket, they'll buy it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. just... They remember that. <laughs> so... Logan, the, the Germans loved him, but he never really kind of um, pushed on in the Irish and British markets. So Louis said, "Be Jesus, I'll, I'll need to find another young boy, uh-huh. or maybe more than one young yeah, boy." Yeah, yeah. And I think what Louis caught on to, which was brilliant, uh, because after Take That, obviously, so Take That came out. But to give Take That their due, they were fucking. They could dance. They could move. They mm. could sing. Like Robbie and Gary. I mean, Gary was writing the some of the songs. Like Gary was. Give Barlow no, his due. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm a Robbie guy. No, listen. <laughs> that you didn't. Sure, you're a Robbie guy. I'm a Robbie guy. Yeah. Of Robbie was at Robbie that, guy. Oh, I hundred percent. Like Robbie. I mean, don't even get me wrong. Give the devil his due. Give the devil his due. <laughs> Robbie had. Robbie had my heart of flutter. Yeah. Late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. I thought Williams could do no wrong. Yeah. When he stripped off and rock DJ, I thought the world was going to explode. I wanna rock. Yeah. DJ. DJ. But you're making me feel so right. That fucking video scared me though. Right. Didn't like it. When he became a skeleton yeah. at the end. I wasn't I, ready to see skeletons at that age. I thought it was kind of irresponsible because they'd have that on at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning. <laughs> we used to have a thing called uh, Top 30 Hits, which is in, so we'd get mm-hmm. to see the top hits on the chart and sure we'd be, and I was excited by the nudity, I will say that. Yeah. That was, excited uh, me. Um, and I didn't know I'm not I saying, always wanted a wee pair of the pants you know the one with the tiger on the front for that video, yes. little black pants with the tiger on the front and I still do yeah. want those pants and I think you could I think you're getting to a stage where you could get them you think so and where you deserve them I think people would shun me for that no I don't think they would right. I think you've got to a stage now in my mind where you're untouchable and you could wear anything and you could do anything. I already feel untouchable. Yes. Because <laughs> nobody's touching me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, no, but, I loved I loved Robbie. You know. But but take that. So Barlow and but like to give him like, you know, a million love songs later. Like he was penning some lovely melodies. Yeah. Like to give the to give the devil's shoe. Now, as a Robbie man, but these fuckers were dancing, they were singing. Take that were talented. And Louis said, What if we could have lads? That can't dance. <laughs> Only one of them can sing. Yeah, yeah. How would people maybe swallow that? Yeah, and, and a lot of people are like, "No way, Louis." 
there's no way you can't have four of them able to do absolutely nothing and just one of them be able to sing in a weird nasally way like, oh, like yeah, Keaton yeah. and Louis said sure we'll give it a try they couldn't have been more successful no, yeah, yeah. people will take anything don't fight it where does that voice from oh. it's a cowboy voice oh, deeper than the bowels of a childhood misspent <laughs> Um, so uh, <laughs> he he did have a, he had some growl on him, but so uh, but so Louis then because you would see them with Westlife again. The Irish can't dance. There's just we can't. Come on, we can't. Well, yeah, but we Rebel cannot dance flatly. He's not Irish. That's the worst thing. He's American. Is he? He's an American fella. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. This so is the Pogues again, this man. This is the Pogues again. Eh? I know. Sure did fucking... Cuts English. It'd, bre- it'd break your heart. <laughs> there's no one's Irish. I'm not Irish. I don't think we're any... <laughs> there's not one of us has ever been Irish. <laughs> so when I was growing up, I thought the greatest Irish actor was Daniel Day-Lewis because he lived in Wicklow. She's not Irish at all. It's Welsh. Huh? Hmm? Is, is Day-Lewis Welsh? Lewis. Is that Lewis. The- Right, yeah, he is well. But sure, he, he was in every Irish movie growing up. He was in, in My Left Foot, then he was in In the Name of the Father, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then he was in The Boxer. So he was in three, he was doing all these films with Jim Sheridan, all Irish. Yeah, so we thought he's the greatest Irish actor. She yeah. is from nowhere near the place. <laughs> for, fucking <laughs> for fuck's sake, heartbreaking, uh-huh. really. Yeah, um, but so anyway, uh, uh, so Louis then with Westlife, then again, even I'll say to Westlife though, they were better singers than Boys Own. Can I just ask, what was Keaton's role in the, what, the transition for boys on to Westlife? What, he, what managed, he managed yeah. Westlife. So what did he, he left sl- Louis, didn't right. want to work with him anymore, but he said, what I will do is I will now ma- co-manage Westlife with you. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So Boy Walsh puts together Westlife yeah. after with, Boys on? With, with, with Keaton. Keaton. Yeah, it was Boys on was <coughs> winding down. Keaton was off, uh, you know, to sing the theme song of Notting Hill. And <laughs> so... He had that kind of wrapped up. He said, lads, I, I can't, in, in all good conscience, I can't spend any more time with Keith Duffy. He keeps talking about tyres. And I just, you know, it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. He wants to make the whole Can set I... on tour tyres in the background <laughs> and to sell tyres after the show. I can't have it. So. Uh, we need to sell t-shirts, yeah. mugs. <laughs> yeah. No one just... has come to the concert without tyres on their car, Keith. No. Nobody wants a new tyre. <laughs> I'm sure they could put it in the boot. But you might, as well, have, you might as well have been speaking to the wall. Yeah, he was he was, he was, was tyre mad. But so, and then uh, Ronan, uh, I think what it was, was that uh, Louis wanted to bring in Ronan as a mentor to the boys mm-hmm. and to tell him. So when you say, kinda what? you kind of click into the fingers yeah. and you maybe throw in kind of one of, one of these. Now the West Life lads famously loved a stool. Mm. They loved a stool. They wouldn't work to warm themselves. They were as lazy a band every, as you'd every find. Every song is like engineered towards the key change. The and big to stand point, up off the, the stand stool. Stand up off the stool. Yeah. And to be fair, it was an effective tactic. Well, I mean, yeah. You, you just, it's just that's what your heart's doing when you're listening to it. 100%. Your heart standing up on a stool. That's right. So it's nice to see. Well, it's nice what's to happening to you happened to someone else and they knew that and they knew this would be a, a visual representation of the emotional journey mm-hmm. of the audience mm-hmm. and by god it worked mm. they were massive in Japan the Japanese loved yeah. Westlife they couldn't get enough of it yeah. they, they didn't really understand them but they <laughs> they just felt something deep deep in their loins it goes beyond them. language it does yeah you know yes um, well there was a kindness to them barring McFadden who they <laughs> cut out like a like a malignant tumour <laughs> Really but, anti-McFadden? Well... What I'll, did you make of his, his when he left? Oh, that heart broke my heart. Well, so McFadden got ideas about himself um, beyond the station. He married Kerry Katona. <laughs> he's she's a Yoko figure. Of very Westlife. Yoko-ish figure. Um, she also was massive Yoko. in the New York art world. Um, uh, great performance artist, Kerry Katona. But so... I, I remember seeing actually. I remember I was a big fan of the uh, "I'm a Celebrity Gate Me Out of Here" that Kerry. Yeah, uh, she was won. great in that. She was great. Yeah, she was brilliant in that, and she came out. And I remember McFadden was waiting for her, and I said, "McFadden, you've got the world at your fingertips, you devil." <laughs> and he he left. He so he left Westlife, and sure, he thought to himself really deep down, "I am R- Robbie, Robbie Williams 2.0. He, he, he thought he was Robbie. 
he teamed up with Robbie's songwriter Guy Chambers uh-huh. oh, yeah. for his original for his first album incredible songwriter yeah, yeah. amazing um, and you really knew how good he was when him and Robbie stopped writing together and then sure Robbie was fucking you know he went spare <laughs> yeah it's you know? apology shit you know yeah so uh, so McFadden came out but sure the the solo career mm. was you know he had this song where he's just like that's a part of me and there was, there was just those lines in it that you're thinking how have you got it was just like and I'm at home watching football <laughs> on TV <laughs> but like it's like stop saying you're watching football like it's a Che Guevara revolution yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean but that's what he'd be like oh. you know he'd be like Corona's esque Corona's esque exactly <laughs> just kind of like um, oh radicalizing <laughs> everyday things sorry about that <laughs> that was a nasty move on my behalf. No, it's okay. We've got the paper towel here. You keep but so McFadden left. He thought he was going to be the new Robbie. He wasn't. Um, to be fair, to give him uh, some part of you, Westlife never were never as good again. Oh, the, the sum of the parts was more than the total of the whole. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, um, so I have a we have a little thing on this a little segment called Unhinged YouTube Comment of the Week. <laughs> Couldn't Ooh. really find an unhinged one about the boys. Yeah, what I did find was unhinged Twitter post from 2007 by Brian McFadden of the Week. <laughs> wow, <laughs> don't know if you <laughs> unhinged Twitter post from 2017 by Brian McFadden. 2017, not, yeah. So not that long ago, yeah. but it, it, seven years ago. Yeah. I think. Six. Six. I don't know. Brian McFadden said, wouldn't it be great if ISIS had the balls to stand face to face with us and fight? <laughs> Does he mean Westlife? <laughs> well, he would have left. <laughs> I don't know what. We were fucking sitting on stools, mate. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be great if ISIS had the balls to stand face to face with us and fight? No weapons, no bombs, no dead children, man to man. That's right. What would... It's, it's, it reminded me, I don't know if you saw that TV show they had on, like, The Challenge or yeah. Bravo or something. It would be like, yeah. oh, ninjas versus the IRA. Or, yeah. you know, fucking uh, Al-Qaeda versus a samurai. <laughs> and they would get these different historical combatants and yes. say, one-on-one, who would win? Yeah. ISIS... Brian McFadden. <laughs> Brian McFadden. <laughs> well, the way McFadden's talking there, it's hard not to back him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a man who's watched you, you, John Wick <laughs> and felt this is not out of my grasp. Um I would like to see John Wick, but it's it's Shane <laughs> who gets shot at the start of it. <laughs> instead of his dog. Shane Fire. <laughs> And Shane Foylan, in a lot of ways, was McFadden's yeah. dog. D- Delta Goodrum gets fucking. Oh yeah, and, you know. I will say, like McFadden, when he said, when he did come out and say that, that was it. That did cause a big stir in Ireland of just complete and utter derision, pro ISIS sentiment he, in Ireland. When that we got very behind ISIS after that comment, <laughs> and we started texting his address yeah. to different members of that organisation. <laughs> yeah, big he team. was doxxed immediately. <laughs> Uh, McFadden I mean he was just such everyone had such a laugh at him at that yeah. point but then you, you you see and you look at his romantic history mm. um, a bevy of blondes um, Katona Delta Goodrum mm. Vogue Williams mm. um, who's now uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a relationship with Spencer from Made in Chelsea as Joanne McNally's podcast partner Yeah, and you're saying how, in a, how is he pulling these women and it was kind of a lot of this did you ever notice that, like, the greatest bullshitters, like, just, like, when you talk to them, you're like, they're fucking full of shit. <laughs> and they'll pull unbelievable women because they're just... Well, people that's, love that's being it. bullshit. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. unbelievable. Like, if you yeah. just tell people a fucking... I'll fucking kick the shit out of voices. They're like, Jesus, this, <laughs> this lad. I've never told anybody that I could... I was willing to fight ISIS one-on-one. Maybe I should start and just see where my life goes. I think certainly people would look at you and they'd think, he's got a lot of moxie. He's what got a lot of spunk. saying, well, he must have an idea of what's going to happen when he gets there. What do you think? I don't know if he's trained in jiu-jitsu or anything. I'd say he might have done, he might have done a BJJ class. I think there's like people get into this. Like my brother, Pa, now is after getting into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And there's kind of a change in his, you know, 
Like he's kind of like you'd be like going for the last biscuit, and I'd be like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Unless you want to roll around yeah. the ground for 100%. five minutes and get yeah. knee in the ribs. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of got this thing of like now he's... he's. I he, get you in the clinch and you will be regurgitating that biscuit, bro. Lad, he got me in one of these like fucking rare knee... Do you know when people are like, they start doing that stuff and then they're like, they're just like, I'll do a little demonstration on you. And I was like, why? Yeah, and no, you no. know? And then he, he's like, no, no, I will just to show you. And then he like, whatever he puts the pressure, they just, they could fucking burst your head like a fucking grapefruit. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't like that now. Like I feel like I have to learn it just to be able to fight him. Well, how do you feel? How do you think ISIS feel? Huh? How do you think ISIS feel? You know, they've got a big... Guilty? Mc, McFadden running about. <laughs> <laughs> this Ready vigilante. <laughs> it's, it's, they think about McFadden the way that mobsters think about Batman. Like, well, and the, the other thing is that uh, McFadden, in a very unlikely... Not unlikely term, but himself and Duffy got into bed together. Um, boys life. Huh? Boys life. Recently, yeah. I was in Warrington. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Warrington recently. Not to brag. Not to brag. I was at Par Hall, the Pyramid. Nice venue there. And um they had a a wee, you know, behind the scenes a yeah. little piece of paper saying I was like, What's this? Boys life. Yeah. I was in a dressing room where the last people to be in the dressing room was none other than Keith Duffy and Brian McFadden. You met them? No. Oh. I was there two days oh, after. they were there two days after. <laughs> Could just, but, could just they, were, they were doing the four o'clock show and <laughs> Chris is on at eight. <laughs> you know, you know, I love like, the idea that there's just like just four spare tires kind of left <laughs> <laughs> around the dressing tires room. Back here. Ah yeah, Duffy was here. A big bite out one of them. Selling his way. Yeah, he keeps trying to feast tires. He keeps trying to eat his own tires. <laughs> high in your own supply. <laughs> high in his own. <laughs> You can't sell that now, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't care. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I just—it was nice just to smell the same oxygen that they'd been breathing. You know? Well, I would—I would honestly, I'd love to pick. I'd love to pick McFadden's brain. And do you know, I think it's so interesting. Yeah, that you get boys' life, so it's half boys' own, half West life. Yeah, and the cunt that fucking left West life considers himself to be the life. In boy's life, it's like you fucking denied yourself that with your own actions, and yeah. now you want to recreate those memories with your your tire eating friend over here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, it's we're, just we're quite frankly a tire eating menace, yeah. <laughs> Keith Duffy. Honestly, I was walking about Warrington, and the the rims were bald. Yeah, every car <laughs> on cement blocks because somebody had. I don't like speculating in case I get. Sued. Well, there has often been there's been a mystery around where Duffy's been getting. All his tires, and some say that they haven't been gotten by legal means. Um, but uh, so McFadden, the, the the thing was, so McFadden left, and when McFadden left, there's actually great, like there's YouTube videos you can look up on YouTube because there was like it was a big news story in Ireland, mm. and there was just girls uh, like just just going <sighs> ah! like like I am talking like they went outside secondary screaming, schools and there was girls. Screaming! Yeah. No, that was my big sister. Balling, we, we, we were upset. We were upset. Yeah, you know, when you're a boy, you're raised not to show sadness. Yeah. But that day, I broke through the <laughs> the levy. <laughs> you see, yeah, that was like um, uh, Diana dying for Ireland. I'd say it was Diana dying, but probably more, even more. There's even greater sadness because it could be avoided. Mm -hmm. Like he's still. <laughs> He's, he's. You don't think Diana's death could have been uh -huh. avoided? You don't think Diana's death could have been it avoided? It was inevitable. It was inevitable. <laughs> if they didn't get her, the row, we're going to get her. Um, <laughs> one way or another, she was getting got. Yeah. But um, uh, <laughs> but it was it was it was heartbreaking. There was a hysteria. There was a sadness. They, like they, it, as you said, the the uh, the the whole was greater than the sum of its parts, and that actually got proven with Westlife because they like even like you saw boys on they got Ronan Keaton had a great solo career. To take that guy's, you know, uh, Robbie, and then when take that got back together, they were great. But like Westlife couldn't, none of them could hack it without the other boys. No. They needed the support, but it's so of interesting, their boys. you know, finding out that they all knew each other, and he was probably always kind of seen as an interloper and always kind of seen as an outsider. And well, they would, they would have had some West of Ireland kind of, um, kind of in jokes. There was a kind of, you know, they're from like the West of Ireland. This is like, it's like, like this is a place where the famine would have been fucking full tilt. There's a, there's a sadness to them. There's a, 
there's a kind of a, a lust for rocks and misery and and then you have McFadden coming in and he's just out of his element. He doesn't get it. He's going after he's, <laughs> yeah. No, he doesn't. He's going after trivial, trivial women. Yeah. Um like Katona. They couldn't understand oh, that. Come on, Katona. Is you you take a farmer's yeah. daughter from County Clare oh, right. and you love her <laughs> yeah. forever. Yeah. And that's what you do. Because the boys are all they're they're, they're monogamous little men. Mm. I tell you that. They they got married young, early, and they and they stuck with their women. Speaking of McFadden, he has a tattoo. Uh you get out Oh, and we will decide oh, if it's a tattoo. Fuck. <laughs> oh, tattoo boo-hoo. Never had somebody just make noises all the way through there that. There you go, it's man. Mike, I think your intervention to the jingle for tattoo boo-hoo, tattoo boo-hoo there uh, shows why your band never worked. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine two Irish boys just going, woo! <laughs> <laughs> there's an <laughs> fucking dry hump and going, I love it, come on. <laughs> there's, there's an enthusiasm that's not backed up by any musical understanding or talent. Just... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just stabbing in the dark. I can only imagine that's what fucking <laughs> West Zone or whatever the fuck boys like for like <laughs> just two guys with a sink. <laughs> yeah. I mean boys like these Would you like to see that show I would? Um I would like to see it. It's hard to see because I mean McFadden could McFadden could probably sing as well as me or you could sing. Like that's the reality of McFadden. He was well, maybe a little above that. Mm. Duffy cannot sing. He can not sing. Like he just he he never pretended he could. Mm-hmm. He he can't do anything. So he's just what there. Do you like the show? He's, he's there wheeling tires across the stage <laughs> and McFadden singing the Westlife songs. Um, right, we need to do this tattoo. <laughs> McFadden has a tattoo, and this will be, this will come up. Well, look at this. Yeah. Right. So it's sometimes life breaks in mysterious ways. Yeah. McFadden has that on the fucking forearm. Yeah. What do you think that means? Um, I th- I think it, he probably got that when he thought, when he left Westlife. Mm. And he was like, you know, some things happened for the better and about, and obviously it just happened for the absolute worst. Yeah. Because um, you were greedy and you wanted to be robbed. Well, he's a greedy little pig. Yeah. He was a greedy little pig. <laughs> he saw Keating's, the, the money Keating was made, he saw the yeah. Notting Hill soundtrack and he said, perhaps I could do the soundtrack for Love Actually or a similar type of uh, Richard Curtis film. Didn't happen. No one wanted him. Um, he went off. But McFadden tried to actually, like the little uh, worm <laughs> that he is, I mean, very hard on McFadden. <laughs> <laughs> but he tried to re- he tried to Well you love Westlife and he destroyed it and Well sense. he ripped it apart They were never the same again Even their hits after that time Were all just kind of Very on the nose covers You Raise Me Up You Mandy. Raise Me Up yeah, That's right yeah. They didn't bring Because before that Even World of Their Own Even Ba Ba Baby Dude please. some of the right. Ba Ba Baby Ba Ba Baby See if that had a different refrain See yeah. if it wasn't because bop bop baby doesn't mean anything. It means sweet fuck all. But if, I was thinking, see if that was heartbreak baby. Yeah. And it was like, my mom's there. The man with me. The man in there. 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 The when I'm lying in my bed with the stars in my head, when we're dancing, we're singing, and we laughed all night. Ooh, ooh, bop, bop, baby, please don't let me go. Can't live my life this way. Ooh, ooh bop, bop, baby, please just let me know. Let me know. I mean, see if he was saying heartbreak, baby, yeah. please. It would mean anything. <laughs> It's it's amazing. It's such a powerfully emotionally oh, raw song. Absolutely. And then it's bop bop baby. baby. What? I think that? I think there was a uh, there was certainly just in the recording studio there was a lack of 
someone to come in and say, hey, what does Bop Up Baby mean? <laughs> and I don't think any of the guys are ever going to be likely to have that curious mind. None of the guys were known for their curiosity. Yeah. They were kind of, they oh. accepted everything on the face of it. Yeah. They were given a song, they sang the song, they didn't ask questions, they yeah. went to Japan, they got sucked off. <laughs> Happy days. Right? <laughs> That's how they lived their life. A life. Yes. Lived. A life lived, a life of saying they read the secret, say yes. Is there anything better when you think about being alive rather than just living in the moment and just being a pebble in a stream, you know? A hundred percent. And know. going out and singing the shit out of these songs. Yeah. Thinking about things. Well, as my, no as my father benefit. would often say, never think about anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's, his, that's his belief system. And I kind of... The Westlife boys knew that. Well, the Westlife boys, they're from the countryside in Ireland. <laughs> Thinking's a fucking is a middle class luxury. That's what the English did. And look what you end up after a while yeah. if you think enough, the thoughts will turn evil. Brexit. And colonial. Yeah. So uh the boys uh so what happened was, sadly, so the boys had another couple of albums after um World of Their Own, which still did well. And well, the one straight after was like a rat pack covers album. It was like swing when you're winning they by Robbie. Saw what Robbie did. It was as if they yeah. went, you think you're gonna be Robbie, we're gonna be fucking Robbie bitch. That's you know? right. We're fucking yeah. the rat pack. But I, they weren't the rat pack. They weren't the rat pack uh, at all. They were they're four lads from County Sligo. <laughs> yeah. Do you know they couldn't have been further from Dean Martin, Frank Snack. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> because these that, are written, this album cover really says a lot. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll show, you know, it's, uh, look at that, you know. Yeah. We take a look at the album art and we decide yes. if it is good or far. That's right. You know, well, world that's are... four lads and jeans. That's right. But that's, that's fucking lads. Hands in the pocket. County Sligo. Irish. You Boot can't see the jeans. shoes, but they're brown. Yeah. And brown shoes. Pointy. <laughs> yeah. We're going in, we're, we're going into uh, a disco and we're. Dancing like that, mm -hmm. we're banging the floor, and we're eating a lot of cabbage. In the disco? No, oh yeah. <laughs> Bowl of buttery cabbage, eat it in, offer a fork to a lady named Sinead, you're married the next week. Yeah. Now, that's that's what they were. Next yeah. thing, they're like, hey, what if we were the most iconic, cool, suave, suave <laughs> worldly. worldly, cool, sought-after men of all time? What, what if we did that? Will people buy that? Why would they buy that, Shane? Yeah. Why would they buy it? Yeah. You can't just do a complete 180 and be like, hey, the sky's purple now. <laughs> we're actually we're actually nothing that we said we were for the last six years. We're a completely different thing. Is this the love album you're discussing? We're the, look, the one where they the fucking... One where it's like, no, the one where they dress up as the rap pack, where they're doing fucking yeah, covers of... Like it there. Was it called Love? The, no, that's a different one. Well, just the only reason I mention that is because the first and only single released on that one was a cover of the Bette Midler song. Oh, the Rose. Bette Midler fact. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Sure, they'd lost their way at that point. Yeah. <laughs> they had lost their they way. They have a Bette Midler fact of one. Yeah. But, uh, so as time went on, so they had... It, it, they would have albums where they'd have one hit on it, like they'd have, they did the boo, like, let me come home. I'm not, so they did a cover of a boob, like cover, I don't know what the fuck. They had, you raised me up, which I I didn't like that. You uh, raised me up. Yeah. I, it, it, was, it, it was like a worse version of the Josh Groban version yeah. of it. I didn't, I wasn't mad on that. They did Mandy, which I liked the song Mandy to Barry Manlow. Oh, Mandy. You came man, and you stopped me from shaking. And, and I'll send you away, oh, Mandy. Mandy. So I, they, there was some of this. And then, but it was coming, they weren't like, the first three albums, they were, I think, I, I, and you can look this up. I, I think, think the most UK up. number ones ever are the Beatles, Elvis, and Westlife. And you can look that up and see if I'm correct about that. Their first three albums, they were blitzing it. Yeah. And then they kind of slowed down. And then... You think this is the best one? I think... Yeah, I do think it's yeah, the best that one. That rock edge you were talking about, seeing the song when you're looking like that, and it's like... Oh! It's like fucking... With Black, Black Sabbath just show up in here, someone's playing the electric guitar. Yeah. You know? And then even they're like... Cause it, and they have it, like the back end of that is like... How am I supposed to leave you now when you're looking like that? I can't believe what I just gave away Now I can't take it back I don't want to get along I don't want to live a life without you Am I supposed to leave you now? When you're looking like that, that, 
that, yeah, baby. I mean, it's just, it's, I was eight years old. Yeah. I didn't know about taste. Yeah. I didn't know. I just wanted to make big sister to like me, man. Yeah. And my God. Remember, she went to see them. They sold out the SECC. Yeah. The precursor to the Hydro in Glasgow. The Scottish Exhibition Conference Centre. Yeah. Biggest venue. They'd sell it out in the morning. They sold it out more than anybody else. They had got an award from the SECC, the same way that Kevin Bridges has an award for the Hydro for selling that out. Westlife, you know. And Glasgow, I mean, you know, and we've got an Irish population, but like you said, in Japan, no, you know, the Irish went everywhere. They didn't yeah. go to Osaka. No. Necessarily. We avoided that. We boycotted <laughs> that in a way, and it wasn't kind. But... <laughs> We took America's side, we did. But we knew where our bread was buttered. Um, not after what happened at the harbour. No, of course. But, uh, so I went to see Westlife yeah. 2019, comeback tour, Croke Park. Oh. Good. Transcendence. Yeah. What was great was McFadden tried to get back in and they said, you can take your fucking ball now and go home because you had your chance. They said that. They did. Yeah. They did. They wouldn't. Do you think he wants to go around doing boys life with fucking Keith Duffy <laughs> or sell out 80,000 seater in Croke Park? Yeah. 80,000 seats they yeah. sold. 80,000. Really? 80, 80, and they did two nights. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Last Pete, time I was in Dublin, it was the old uh, Garth Brooks at Croke Park. There's a, there's a love for Garth Brooks in Ireland that just does not make real sense I mean he couldn't be bigger there yeah I mean he sold he sold a few years ago he sold and he ended up cancelling the gigs and you're thinking you must have some money to be cancelling these <laughs> but he had he yeah. sold 550,000 tickets wow that's one in every 10 people in the country yeah. was going to wearing get a pink cowboy hat yeah. yeah yeah. but he started off like a, a lion dancing phenomenon in Ireland in the 90s did he yeah there's a great um there's a great page on Instagram called um reeling in the weird and it's just basically old footage of like like TV shows in Ireland and it's one of the funny shows we've a great show in Ireland called reeling in the years that we that we just love on our Irish TV show which will just go like 1995 and then it'll just go through everything that was happening in Ireland and the yeah, world yeah. at that time it'll play songs at the time and uh you know we only had two channels so this was fucking <laughs> brilliant yeah. we loved it but so then reeling into weird is this instagram page where it's just all this like the artist like it'll just be like the belly the belly cotton the belly cotton carrot championship <laughs> and they'll just you know they'll just be making programs of all the just strange weird yeah, yeah. rural things irish people do and we're just such no one has any teeth uh -huh. we're the ugliest even if you watch like Irish sports, like from like are the sports we ourselves like hurling, uh, Gaelic football, like the the homegrown Irish sports. You know, like if you watch like G A G A, you're a learned man. I love are you Ireland. Dates? Yeah, can I just say, I think it's great. It's a great spot. Flawed, but a masterpiece. I like I like that mm. kind of like um, I'm trying to think what's flawed but a masterpiece. Um, this album. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, absolutely. We've come full circle. It's honestly, got eight shite songs and four whopper hits. Listen, World of Our Own by Westlife to me is Ireland because my God, <laughs> Bop Bop Baby, Uptown Ghetto. When you're looking like that, yeah. Evergreen later covered or later That's also right. sang by Will Young. Yes, um, World of Our Own. Yeah, I mean these are phenomenal songs. Queen but of my there's heart. A lot of Queen stuff. of my heart. Yeah. Where I'm like, Ireland, you know. Yeah. So to me, something like Walk Away or Don't Let Me Go, that's the kind of Christian Brotherhood yeah. album. You know, that's yeah, the stuff. Yeah. A lot of bad stuff happens in Ireland as well. That's right. And that's why this is a flawed masterpiece, just like your beautiful country. Well, there's a nasty, dark undercurrent uh, in Ireland. There's a friendliness there. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, you know, we've uh, had great writers. Great phenomenal artists, phenomenal artists. James Joyce, James Joyce, Flannery, Beckett, O'Brien. Yeah, Flann O'Brien. Um, you know, Roy Keane. Oh, uh, <laughs> wonderful author. Jedward. Uh, Jedward. Another Louis Walsh Abs boy. Dealt. Yeah, two uh, boy, two identical boys. In case one of them dies, <laughs> you get a one spare. <laughs> Were any either of them really alive? Was the question. There was a. They're alive now. They've really came to life. Jedward. Yeah, the last couple of years. Well, they're kind of they're 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 two of the most they're blessed with an unbelievable delusion that you can only say is um 
lucky for them. You know, they have no idea they failed. Um, they haven't a clue. They think things have gone from strength to strength. They haven't. They really have no. They just haven't a clue what's happening. Yeah. But they. But they do believe whatever it is. It's yeah, yeah. it's good. Big time. Um, Still got the hair. But that Louis, that Louis era, because the X Factor, I was. I was of that, at that time, I think now everyone's very self-aware about how, you know, because there's a lot of meta stuff that's come out, so everyone's aware of how things are made, mm. and there's a lot, even with social media, of, like, podcasts, where we would, people talk about the process of things, and the makings of things, even comedy and whatnot, but there was a time there, a, a beautiful time, maybe, that we were completely oblivious that what we were seeing wasn't complete truth, sure. so, you know, even, like... That was the interesting thing about X Factor, was they literally took the process that they used to find Westlife and to find yes. Boyzone and they just showed that on TV. That's right. Because they had all those aspects of the, you know, just open invite and go through the next round and oh, yeah. try different people, different people and the judges are, you know, evil paedophiles and that's stuff. That's right. You know? And then they just put that on TV. <laughs> and I think that's really cool. I thought, well, the thing was I that I didn't realise could the, to later was that of course we're only seeing the the very best and the very worst people we're mm -hmm. only seeing the shittest people because it's funny how shite they are mm. and then the the very best because they're good um so there's those people like i knew people who went for the x factor who just never got on tell you or not like mm -hmm. the majority of people don't even get on and yeah, i did yeah. i couldn't have foreseen that i thought we were seeing everything that was going on and you can't believe that you're like you don't get to meet the judges what are you talking about that's like? right <laughs> i couldn't believe i thought you go on you're going to see the guys it's just you go to a producers meeting and they're like is that sad happened yeah. to you did you ever but the when i would watch extra and i would watch louis and of course he had uh jedward well what happened was they they stay they stopped trusting louis with anyone good um, <laughs> they just got it into their head that, Why was that? Well I think Obviously he had Boyzone and Westlife But I think Simon After getting to know Louis enough <laughs> Decided that um, <laughs> That their success Was nothing to do with Louis yeah. That they had That there were other factors That led to that And then of course he got They gave him Shane Ward uh -huh. who, who, oh. who won one of the early mm. X Factors And Louis drove him Straight into the ground mm. Um, so they said, and then after that, they gave him another good group or two, but like even he, he had, he was One Direction's, uh, mentor yeah. in X Factor. But yeah. as soon as it ended, they were like, Louis, you're having no. nothing to do with him. Yeah, Simon's like, yeah, yeah. I'm taking yeah. these boys and we're getting them as far away from you as we can. Cause well, there was also, you know, you don't want ripe young, like no. they were too young for Louis. Yeah. At least Westlife, they were 18. They were strong enough to. Even from the still, West, they got they got beasted though, you know. I mean, Harry was going out with a fucking thirty-two-year-old woman or something when he was seventeen. Well, Styles, I, I mean, <laughs> give that lad his due. I mean, he one of the horniest men that's ever lived. He's pumped it. He's just been just from from day dot. He hasn't put a foot wrong. Mm. You have to give it to Styles. <laughs> he has not put a Is foot not, fucking well, wrong. What, sexually or musically? Musically, sexually. As in musically, I'm not talking about, you know, he's not like he made Sgt. Pepper's uh, Lonely Hearts Band, but what I mean is like that. Yeah. For, I like that one. She, she lives in daydreams with me and I don't know why. Yeah. That one's a good one. Well, it's a beautiful tune. Thanks. Sung by a beautiful man. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm talking about you here. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. arguably bigger now as well. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and he's just, he courted the press in a way that's, you know, has been only beneficial to him. Isn't it so interesting, though, that he's a straight guy yeah. who pretends to be gay? Yes. Whereas back in this day, you had Mark, who was gay. You had, you had Rock Hudson. Straight, you know, yeah. Back in the 50s. Yeah. Oh, this feels like the 50s. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Ireland in the 90s is America in the 50s. Well, what people don't realise, <laughs> Ireland, we were very... Um, we were very slow to modernize and then we just kind of got very cool very quick and we were like ah forget about the past but we were gay to be gay was illegal till yeah 94 fuck me yeah uh, divorce was only legalized uh in 97 contraception uh we still don't have and uh so oh so we we were very slow is the 90s everton kind of, once we got money yeah the Catholic Church start, started to lose their grip on us because we were driving off in our yeah. fast cars. They were like, SUVs. fuck off. Yeah. I want to shag someone, <laughs> you know. Um, so we were quite, even like, the, even by the time Westlife came in, we were just slowly finding our way into 
you know, liberalism and the 21st yeah. century and gays. And then luckily, uh, well, not luckily, that's a bad way to put it. But when the scandals came out about the priests, that allowed Ireland to get away from the Catholic Church, really, those scandals. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They allowed. Course. It was a they, license to go. They, Maybe yeah. you don't know. That's right. My thing with the pedo priests is like, hold on a minute. I don't believe in heaven. Yeah. And I'm not a pedophile. Yeah. There's this place called heaven where you're only allowed in yeah. if you are a good person. These guys believe in it and they're doing this. <laughs> they can't think, oh, I'll be getting into heaven now. But I think the and I heard someone say it on uh, an episode of fucking White Lotus. I don't know if you watched that, but it's mm. very good. Mm -hmm. But um, Mike White. Uh, Mike Weiss Who yeah. uh, directed uh, School of Rock He was Ted Schneebly In the School of Rock <laughs> was, It's actually yeah. directed By Richard, Rick, Richard Linklater Not to <laughs> Sorry r yeah. Not to make no, it, no no thank you Not to correct you On your own part Because that's nasty but No it's a thank, he, he, thank you You're very welcome <laughs> It was a gift But they Mike White wrote it Huh Mike White wrote it He could have He could have Because he, he was must. He must have If he was in it Because he was just he had His character <laughs> was just In the very start of the film He's Ted Schneebly Oh come on He comes back Sarah Snilgerman's like, the wife uh, Yeah there's a, a few Little what? bits in it Yeah But um, great film <sighs> School Rock When I saw that in the cinema I watched it in the cinema Three months ago I thought film has been perfected Yeah What you, it was it was here, was it? GFT <gasps> brought it back for the 20th anniversary, 15th anniversary or something. That's gorgeous. Phenomenal. Jack White's never been better. No. He was really on a fucking... Jumanji 2 was good, but no. <laughs> I thought in, in Tropic Thunder, I love him. When Jack he gets on his ass, he's like, my ass. Black, so Jack Black. Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> I said Jack White. <laughs> oh, fuck. Easy confused. Easy he confused. Turns, Jack White turns up in Killers of the Flower Moon, actually. Does at, he? At the end. Just a, just a tiny little cameo, Jack yeah. White's there. I saw Jack White in... Nashville when I was on acid at an old uh, veterans um, at this old like Vietnam War veterans oh, hall right. where there's this dancing thing so I was in Nashville and we asked <laughs> is that what Ireland had to host Eurovision <laughs> 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 yeah. We outsourced it <laughs> to Nashville but uh, so we went we were in Nashville and we were chatting to this old fucking we, we went to some bar and we were talking to some old yokel and we were like, hey, where are we going out to the real Nashville? We don't want this uh, these honky tonks and the tourist fucking mm. trap around here. Do you know that way? Where did the locals hang and bang? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then he said, well, there's old uh, war veterans center about two miles from here down. Uh, they call it Club 88, but you want to be careful when you go in there because, you know. Club 88? That's right. Hey, well, uh, Yeah. Right. And he said, now you might see some people down there. You might see Jack White. You might see some other musicians. But you don't bother them none because they like to go there because they don't get bothered. Right, right, so right. then I went down there anyway and yeah. I took a half a tab of acid and none of my friends were taken any acid because they were cowardly, man. Yeah. So... But I went in there and, and by God, White was in there dancing with his girl and everyone was leaving him alone. Wow. Till I got my hands on him. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, do, do the song. <laughs> Just him looking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, Just giving it the old fucking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and I and I said, listen, and and I handed him a hard copy of Westlife's World of Their Own, and I said, this? have a listen to some real music, see what you can come up with. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, did you enjoy an album? Huh? Did you enjoy an album this week? Listen to this. Album? Oh, I loved it. Brought me back as well. Yeah. Brought me back. Um, and made me reappreciate. I think Westlife were a cultural punchline, very unjustly, for a long time, and yeah. I think that history has been kind to them. Yeah, and and I think there's a lot of people with egg on chin now looking mm. back because these are some of the best shade crafted, on the lips. huh? Shade on the lips, feces, fecal matter, <laughs> all over their lips, like like Oscar Wilde after a, a wild night. Um, <laughs> and they get, what are these days? <laughs> yeah, Oscar Wilde. Well, are sorry. people shading on Oscar Wilde's skeleton? They are, and it's not that's, right. But that's sure, look, wrong. However, you get your kicks, I will let you off. But uh, <laughs> I have plenty to say about Oscar Wilde. But um, I did. I, I had a great time. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it. And honestly, I remember uh, singing Westlife with you and Nottingham with the Glee. That's we were right. In that horrible wee hotel. Yes. And we were up to all of us. And I was. You started talking about how much you liked Westlife, and I was scared. 
to also say I liked it in case you were taking the piss. Yeah. But I was brave. I said, I really like them. And then you turned out you liked them as well. You were in a safe space. Safe space that night. And for we, sure. were, we were safe space to be boys and to be friends mm. and to be vulnerable and to express ourselves. And honestly, see that night, Mark, we were in a world of our own. <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> Every week we had uh, two songs a piece to the playlist. I don't think I've run this past you. Yeah. We need to add then a song uh, from the album each. Yes. And then also have a slight discussion on any song that's been brought up, any artist that's been brought up. If you want to put in a wee boy's own number or yeah. uh, a Jack White number, <laughs> whatever yeah. you want to stick on the playlist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to stick on from that. You, you have first go. I'm going. What would you like to put on? What's your favorite song from this? Would you like to add to the playlist? <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm going to put on um, Queen of My Heart. She's a queen of my heart. Yeah, I'm going to put on uh, Queen of My Heart. I remember when I played um, in Croke Park 2019 Mm. and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Yeah. There was one boyfriend who was sulking who... With his girlfriend who's in front of me who ref- who had his back turned to the stage the whole show. Really? In Ryan protest. McFadden. It was McFadden. <laughs> it was McFadden. Him and Katona had gotten back together. And yeah. he life was. breaks in, just carving life breaks in mysterious ways, aren't it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Duffy <laughs> Duffy was trying to sell tires down the back. Uh, Duffy brought a tire and just sat in it like it was uh, a little white water rafting scenario. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sell him his seats uh, yeah so I go queen of, queen of my heart she's yeah. a queen of my, my heart. heart I'm going to honestly there's a bit in the bot bot baby video where it comes up and it goes and it, you know this is set in the past it's a historical fiction mm-hmm. this video uh, I think Vinnie Vinny Jones the stars yes and uh, there's a bit yes, at the start does. where it goes uh, when men were men women were virgins and sex was still sexy and you know, I don't even know what that means, man. But then it, but a dim, 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 oh. dim, dim, dim. This is gonna be a ballad. Yeah. Boom, chicken, chicken, yes. Chicken, and and history, boom, dim, dim, history, music changed. Dim, dim, dim. Yeah. Nobody said it would be easy. No. <laughs> I mean, fuck me. <laughs> it's just a real, honestly, Boba Baby. It, it, I genuinely think if they had just do, came up do, with a different three-word phrase, that would be seen as one of the greatest pop songs of all time. Do you know what? I, what's so funny about that, and I never quite articulated what you're saying there, but it, it, because the chorus is so strong. And Please yet it, don't yeah, let me go. go. I live my life this, this way. Before. So like that. You, when but, I call you. What do you think this means, by the way? When I call you at home and he answers the phone. I get that. Yeah. New partner with the woman. Yeah. And then he goes, when I get your machine and I don't hear me. Do you think they recorded an answer machine message together that has now been deleted and replaced? I think that has to be what it means. Because I don't understand. Because I answer the, I ring the machine, and now it's a new one mm. with this other fella, George. But is that what people do in relationships? They go, let's do our couple's answering Well, machine. these are not just any boys. These are lovely boys. And they like to record messages together for their friends to hear when they call their house. They're simple creatures. They're simple creatures. They're creatures of habit, and they love their mothers. <laughs> okay. And they love we'll an apple tart. the first two tracks, and they're yeah. both incredible yeah. tracks. If I had my way... Obviously, we live under the Iron Fist of Liam with now the cock and ball exploded English bastard. <laughs> um, you know, I would happily put on When You're Looking Like That and uh, Evergreen, World of Our Own. That's right. Up, uptown, I mean, my God, Uptown yeah. Girl, I could speak, we would have to do a Billy Joel episode just to speak about Uptown That's Girl. That's right. Um, it's an incredible song. I could I could stick them on. Uh, what What about a song that we've spoke about today? Would you like to put on a boy's own mm. number? Or, um, you know... Um, Robbie Williams, mayhaps. I believe Rock DJ is already. I feel like um, Rock DJ, uh, Robbie Williams. I also feel um, there is a song that Five recorded when they broke up, Mm. uh, which was the last thing they recorded. And of course, things have ended sadly for every single one of them. (laughs) Um, Not (laughs) one of them. Pull the Styles or Williams, they all went straight to Greg's. But <laughs> they all just fucking they, those days. They all Any just hell? absolutely. Um, F, like a um, so there was a song that at the very end, and I can't 
the but there was a very emotional song they broke up and in the video was a montage of their 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 moments together and time backstage where they were frolicking yeah, and yeah. uh and friends and just having fun and if you can look that song up it's a beautiful emotional song um yeah you know mega slippers that one g how let do the 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 playlist i'm sure they can do the research yeah then as also the uh the boy zone song no matter what Uh uh-huh no matter what what Yeah, yeah, it's real good gear. Oh, it's beautiful. They sound gear. like the, the wild dogs. Yeah, you know. Like, um, oh well, I mean, Keating's paying for it now. I mean, yeah. he's he's, <laughs> he's hospitalized. Yeah, most yeah, of the time he's he's, he's brought. He has a little metal thing in there, and he's coming. I am Ronan. Keating. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to stick on life as a roller coaster, and isn't Oy. it just? Isn't oh. it just? Yeah. Uh, life as a roller coaster. Just got to ride it. I need you. Yeah. Don't fight it. I don't yeah. know what you meant by that, but I love it. Yes. I love it to bits. And so, I'd, I've loved having you on, Mike. I've wanted to get you on for a while. Yes. You're in town. Liam's away. I thought I'd do an extra one and fucking some some gaff. Yes. I I enjoyed that immensely. I love you. And um and I love Westlife and and I just hope that this wakes people up or reawakens people to the to the wonder. The fucking skill. Yeah. The talent. The talent. And, and was, the wholesomeness. The wholesome. And it was fine. You could have four lads, five lads in blue jeans with their hands in their pockets and nobody, yeah. nowadays you couldn't do that. And it's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. <laughs> You're not allowed a couple of boys with their hands in their blue jeans. No. Know? Now it's looked at as, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See you lads. Thank Up you. the lads. Thank you very much. Uh, peace and love in the new millennium. Thanks for having, thanks for being on. <laughs> <laughs>